In this video, I'm going to show you a bunch of crazy stuff here. One is going to be about the tangent. I'm going to show you quadrants. Then I'm going to show you something a little bit different called special triangles. Depends on how your teacher has taught this to you, but uh, this is a way to do it. This one isn't necessary, but it's a pretty neat trick. So let's start off with tangent. There's an identity that we get. This is a fact that you're given on your formula booklet, and it says that tan of theta equals sine theta over cos theta. So if you know what sine is, you know what cos is, then divide those two answers and you end up with tan. So tan is sine over cos. That is the main thing here. That's the identity. This is on your formula booklet. So hooray. All right, so then uh, there's a ton of really dumb jokes because of this. There's a whole bunch of really stupid uh, memes and things like that. So here's one. I mean, there's so many of them, but like, look, why did I divide sine by tan? Just cause, look, because if you do sine and you divide it by tan, you end up with cos. Oh God. And no, Einstein didn't really say that. <laughs> So let's take a look at this and maybe try to remind ourselves about the graph of this here. Let me try to do this maybe in blue. I'll attempt to draw myself some kind of straight line through the origin. There we go, something like that. So if I consider this graph, this is x, this is y, and I've got some straight line through the origin here. So some point right here. This point will have coordinates x and y. And if you remember, at least on a unit circle, because here, if we're going around in a unit circle, actually, let's consider that. Um, remember that as we go down, maybe like this over here, this might be one over here. So it's a little bit less than one, you know, because as it goes down, it'll sort of reach like that. It's like it's supposed to be on a circle, right? So as we go some angle theta here, remember how we can define the x and y. If we're doing this unit circle by going around some angles, then we can define and say that the x is the cosine of the angle and the y is the sine of the angle. Now, why is that helpful? Well, remember we just talked about um, what tan is. Tan is sine over cos. Okay, now let's think about this carefully here. This is actually kind of neat. What's the equation of a straight line graph? So equation of a straight line. Remember how that goes? That goes y equals mx plus c. However, c is 0 in this case right here. So that one right there will just cancel out because the y-intercept is 0 here. So that's gone. So we just have basically y equals mx. So m is the gradient, isn't it? Gradient. All right. What am I going to use with this? Well, do you notice, though, if x is cos, and y is sine. If I'm going to do some sort of gradient here, do you notice, like this right here, isn't the gradient just gonna be, well, delta y over delta x? Isn't that what a gradient is? In other words, it's the y values over the x's. But we said the y values were sines. All right, so notice that's sine theta, and the x's are coses. So what does that give you? Remember what sine over cos is, it's tan. So why do we care about this? Well, we care about this because the gradient is equal to tan theta. Now, what does that do for us? That's going to help us. So we can sort of rewrite this. We can say, hey, look, the gradient is tan of theta. Right, so we'll put that down like this. So what do we do with this? That means we can write the equation then for the straight line graph. We could say the equation goes y equals, instead of the gradient, I'm going to put in tan theta. So it's going to be tan theta all that times x. That's sort of, we can write some equation of a straight line. As long as we're defining theta like this or here, then this will work. So that's kind of a neat thing we can do with it. There you go, we're done with the tangent. Okay, now there's lots of really bad puns like this. So let's talk about um, how to solve equations using special triangles and quadrants. So I'm gonna show you a little trick here. I uh, hope it's gonna make some sense for you. Let's just see how it goes. But uh, we're going to be able to start solving really complicated questions. My goal is to try to prepare you, you know, for exams. For that, you have to be able to solve really advanced questions. My goal is going to be to get you to do a question like, uh, whoops, like this one right here. For example, sine of 4 pi over 3. Without a calculator, we're going to try to do this by hand. So that's going to be my goal is to get you there. So special triangles are one way to do it. They're not required in the syllabus, but I think it's an important thing to show you. I'm going to show you a little trick. And later on in another video, I'll show you more tricks, but this is just one of them. These special triangles, if this angle right here is 60 degrees, well, this one here is 90, 
This must be then 30. So we call this the 30, 60, 90 one. This one, however, I'll make this one 45. And this one here, I'll make this 45. That's because 45 plus 45 is 90. So 90, so that adds up to 180. So there's a 30, 60, 90 one, and there's a 45, 45, 90. And the trick is, you have to know this. This is maybe worth memorizing, but this length right here can be 1. If that's 1, this right here is 2, and this right here must be root 3. This is a bit weird. So I remember it goes 1, 2, root 3. 1, 2, root 3. That's how it goes from 60. I used to have my students just memorize these two. I would actually just ask them in the hallway, quick, special triangles. It was one of the only things I actually suggested to my students that they memorize. So I would say you might want to memorize this. You don't have to, but you might want to. Okay, so... I'll put down memorize question mark. So it's not required. I'll show you some other tricks, but memorize. That might be a useful one to actually put to memory. Let's see how we can use this. So if we're asked for the cosine of pi over 3, well, it helps to know what is pi over 3 as far as degrees. You can think about it from a unit circle. If this here is 0 and this is pi, you know, as you go along like this here, pi over 3 must be a third of it. And if we do one third of a pi, well, this is 180 degrees divided by 3. Oh, that must be 60 degrees. Or you just practice a lot and you know this. So this is 60 degrees. I'm going to call this my reference angle. Now, this doesn't make any sense right now, but trust me, it will later. So I'm going to call this a reference angle of 60 degrees. Well, good. That means now I know which special triangle to use. I'm going to use the one that has 60 degrees in it. So I'm going to just draw it as if I didn't already just have it right in front of me. So I go 60. I put the 30 up top, I go 90, and it goes 1, 2, root 3. Now why do I do this? Because now I have cos. If I want cos, I'll do it maybe a different color. If I want the cosine of 60 degrees, because that's what pi over 3 is. The cosine of 60 degrees, well, remember Sokatoa? Cosine must be um, adjacent over hypotenuse. Right, so ka. Well, adjacent to this is the 1. Hypotenuse is 2, so it's going to be 1 over 2. Therefore, that's my answer. Right? So my answer is 1 over 2. There we go. Yay, I've done it. So what does this actually tell us? Well, it tells us that if we had this unit circle, it would tell us that uh, the x value of this is actually 1 uh, half. Let me show you this sort of from a unit circle standpoint. See if this will make any more sense like this. I'll draw my big old circle here. If I did this angle right here of pi over 3, remember this unit circle, I mean this is 1, this is 1, this is minus 1, this is minus 1. What it's telling me is, you notice if I finish right here, hey look, this value right here is going to be exactly half. That's what it tells me here. Remember, because cosine in a unit circle, cosine is the x value. So do you notice then this here would be the x value would be 1 half. The y value, however, will be something higher than one half. And we'd have to figure that out. So that would be the sine of pi over 3. So that's how we could figure out. And sine, by the way, well, that would be really easy. If we want to sine, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So it would just be root 3 over 2, and we'd be done. So to see, you can use these right here to get you these exact values. These are going to be really useful. But sometimes, it's not so simple as just doing pi over 3. Like, what if it's a multiple of pi over 3, like 2 pi over 3, or 5 pi over 3, or 7 pi over 3, or something. That's why I want to try to show you a more generic trick that's going to help later, okay? So I'm going to show you this steps to solving. It also helps to understand quadrants. So we're just going to revise that. We've already done it in another video. I'm just reminding you how the quadrants work. So where an angle finishes, it's very important because it can tell you something about the plus or minus, if it's sine, cosine, or tangent. So the way I remember, it goes A, S, T, C. A stands for all. So all are positive. That means sine, cosine, and tangent are positive here. S means only sine is positive. The other ones are all negative here. Okay. This here says that tan is positive here, but everything else is negative. This one here says cosine is positive, and everything else is negative. Now let's finally put everything together. So I'm going to try to show you a trick to doing this, and that's going to be the steps to solving. By the way, I like this hypotenuse. I'm from Canada. We have moose there, so there you go. That was cute. Uh, so if a nice step for solving is I like to just draw the angle first, 
and see where it finishes. Then I draw myself a reference angle. I'll explain this. Then I use special triangles or some other trick to get the exact value. And always double check the quadrants to check if it should be a plus or a minus. And let's try to do it with this example. And we're going to have lots of practice. I've got a bunch of other videos where we're going to be doing this plenty of times. So don't worry. But uh, let's try to do this one. Sine of 4 pi over 3. First step, we have to draw the angle. So let's try to draw where... 4 pi over 3 is going to end up. So this right here is my unit circle here. I'm purposely not drawing the vertical one just for a second. It'll be there in a second, don't worry. So this right here will be 1. This here will be 1. This will be minus 1. This will be minus 1. And if I want an angle of uh, pi over 3, see, because that's, I'm going to start off, see it's 4 of these things called pi over 3. I like to think of it as there's a pi over 3 and there's 4 of them. I think that's an easier way to think of it. So I'm going to think of an angle of pi over 3. There it is, because this right here, all the way over, is pi. And I know this is 0. So if you go up here, this is an angle of pi over 3. Well, that means this right here must be an angle of 2 pi over 3, if that makes any sense. This then must be an angle of 3 pi over 3. So down here then must be 4 pi over 3. There it is. So do you notice that this was really helpful? By the way, I could have just drawn my y-axis. I don't know. I didn't. There you go, something like that. So I know then that my angle finishes, this is the key part, my angle finishes here. This is the important thing, okay? So this is my angle here, it goes like this. That's 4 pi over 3. Finishes there. Now I'm going to draw myself a reference angle. What does that mean? Well, this is the, the simplest factor here. So this is 4 of these pi over 3s. So I'm going to tell myself right away my reference angle is going to be pi over 3, which is how many degrees? Remember, this is 60 degrees. This is the key thing now. So everything is in terms of this pi over 3. Now, I'm going to try to figure out then what to do here. So do you notice I'm going to try to draw a special triangle to figure it out? Watch carefully. I'm going to try to zoom in on this little piece right here. So I'm just going to zoom in on the piece I needed. So it goes like this. I'll draw myself a triangle like this. But I know that this piece right here must be 60 degrees. 60 degrees, because that's my reference angle. Do you notice we were doing something as a multiple of pi over 3? I had four of them, sure. But you see, we have to keep it simple. Because dealing with 4 times 60 degrees is not an acute angle. That's just why I'm trying to show you this trick here. So we do 60 degrees. Now, if you remember your special triangles, let's try to remember them. So here's the first one right here. This is the 60, 30, and 90. It goes 1, 2, root 3. And the other one goes 45, 45, 90 this, 45, 45, and 90, it goes 1, 1, root 2. These are the two special triangles. So if I have it set up like this with a 60 degrees, opposite to the 60 is root 3. So opposite to the 60 is root 3. Adjacent to the 60 is 1. So adjacent to the 60 is 1. And the hypotenuse, which is opposite to the 90 degrees here, is 2. So this is 90 degrees, so this must be 2. So then you can think about this thing and say, all right, well, I mean, the, without thinking too carefully about it, we can just leave the numbers like this. We can say, all right, well then, what is the sine of this thing? Well, sine is, let's see, sine of 60 degrees is going to be opposite over uh, hypotenuse, because so katoa, remember, S-O-H. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Therefore, it must be, Let's see, opposite to this is root 3. Hypotenuse is 2. So I know my answer is going to be root 3 over 2. See, now I've done that. See, I'm, I'm at step 3, now it's done. Now I've got to use quadrants to double check where it finishes and see what this tells me. So watch very carefully. Then I'm going to consider my quadrants here. Remember, my quadrants go like this, where this is A, S, T, C. All students take calculus. Um, <laughs> that's a dumb trick, but it works. And I'm finishing here. I'm finishing over here. So what does this tell me? It tells me tangent is positive, but that tells me that everything else is negative. I wanted a sine. Sine, therefore, is negative. So I'm going to say finally, then, I know that the sine of 4 pi over 3, because I just found the sine of 60 was this. That's true. In other words, the sine of just pi over 3 was this answer. But the sine of 4 pi over 3, it puts me into that quadrant, and that tells me then it must be negative root 3 over 2. And I'm done. Now this sounds a bit complicated. Well, it is. This is really hard. A lot of students struggle immensely with this, especially the minus here. 
Another way to think about this would have been to see that, hey, if I overlay this on my axes, because remember there's still sort of a, I don't know if this will be too advanced or not, it depends how you think about this stuff here, but let's say I overlay my x and y axes here. This really means I go to the left in the x, right? So that means you could say, that, oh, that's why that one's minus. And this one here goes down, so that's a minus. And the hypotenuse is always positive. By the way, so you could have just, without having to think about quadrants, you could have just thought carefully about where it sits, and that'll tell you everything you need to know. Because sine, let's see, sine is opposite, boom, over hypotenuse. That's why it was a negative. Do you notice? If I did cosine, by the way, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's why it would be minus 1 over 2. You see, that's a kind of a neat trick. So we're just at the very baby steps of doing advanced things here, but these are pretty advanced. These are hard. A lot of students find the radian stuff to be the hardest. I do these revision courses every year, and I can tell you this without a doubt. Whenever I get students uh, who come into my course, I ask them, you know, what do you struggle with? They almost all say calculus, especially integration. And then they'll almost all say, and radians, these exact value things I don't get. So keep in mind, there's a reason why it's complicated. It takes some practice, so don't worry. So why should you care? Well, these will help us solve all sorts of crazy things by hand later. Okay, so this is important. Take your time with it. Hopefully you'll feel okay about it.